For 25 years, Conference USA student athletes have done things the only way that we know how, the CUSA way. In that quarter of a century, we've learned a thing or two about winning, both on and off the field. Our student athletes are more than just great athletes. They're fantastic students and they're outstanding citizens who give back to their communities. We're committed to excellence. We are stronger together. That's the CUSA way. Well, a good Monday morning from FIU. Beautiful pre-recorded footage outside the Graham Center. It's a stormy morning here on FIU in the 305. A cold front rolling through winter in Miami. That means temperatures in the 60s, but we'll be back to this warm weather soon enough. We appreciate you joining us on Panther Talk Live once again on a Monday morning at the Graham Center. I'm AJ Ricketts. No coach today, kind of a semester wrap up if you will, of the season that was, what's coming up for FIU athletics and FIU football in particular. It's hard to believe it's the end of another semester already, really the end of another decade, if you will, one filled with many moments for FIU, including, of course, about a week ago in Little Havana at Marlins Park, one of the most meaningful moments in the history of FIU football. So the question was, how would this team respond moving forward after experiencing success unlike it ever had before? Certainly a reason for trepidation as we got set to head up to Huntington, West Virginia to take on Marshall. We looked at the forecast, rain, wind, 40, 45 degrees, and we've had those games before in Middle Tennessee and FAU, and you wondered, well, how would it go this time? Would there be a little bit of deja vu? That was certainly not the case at Marshall this past weekend, as gutty a game as FIU has played this entire season. Is, let's take a look at the highlights. Kind of a monotonous first quarter, but then early in the second, 59 yards to Austin Maloney, who's always making big plays down the field, the senior from Columbus. That set up Napoleon Maxwell for a one-yard touchdown run, his eighth rushing TD of the season, and FIU at that point took a 7-3 lead in the second quarter. Marshall got in the end zone the first time on a clever reverse play to Xavier Gaines, who rumbled into the end zone. Well done to take a 10-7 lead midway through the second quarter, but FIU's defense was playing well. A lot of these Marshall drives starting inside the 50-yard line. FIU, in fact, held the herd to under 300 yards on the day. Marshall takes a 17-7 lead, and here's where FIU started to respond. Kalen Wiggins coming in, making big plays, finding Anthony Jones on third and two and then the first play of the fourth quarter Jones rumbling into the end zone for a touchdown finding the pylon 52 yards on the afternoon for Anthony Jones the senior who's had such a marvelous year then the very next play Alexi Jean Baptiste diving on the fumble from Xavier Green and the Panthers would take advantage immediately how good has Tony Gator been the last couple of games Saturday nine receptions a career high 107 yards Look at him staying on his feet, making his way to the end zone. He had 227 yards all of last season. He had 107 in this game alone. FIU all of a sudden, 14 points in 18 seconds. However, Marshall finds the back of the end zone with 2.16 left to go. FIU has to drive down the field and put up three points. This on third and 10, Gator again, yards after catch, he secures a first down. And that sets up Jose Borgales from 40 plus right hash through the uprights, drills it, and that ties the game at 24, sends us into overtime. Weren't able to get in the end zone, but Borgalis now five for his last five. All of those high pressure kicks converts from 35 there, but Brendan Knox, he had a pretty good ball game, 146 yards, 33 carries, including this gut-wrenching play on the first play from scrimmage for Marshall in the overtime period, and he would punch it in one play later. And with that, that was the first overtime game, in fact, in the Butch Davis era. The very first one only goes 1 OT, and Marshall is able to find a way to get in the win column on senior night despite a gutsy, gritty effort from the FIU Panthers, who fall to 6-6. Six and six. So now the question, what are the bowl game scenarios? Always that wonderful time of year, you type bowl game projections into the Google search bar and see what comes up where you may be taking a December road trip. Let's see what those possibilities are this season from all around uh, all around the uh, media platforms. Armed Forces Bowl, now this is going to be January 4th. Interesting, might be higher number of viewers in that bowl game. Gasparilla Bowl has been a projection. We were there. Here's a video that the Cure Bowl made. They're in Orlando December 21st. They're actually playing at the Orlando FC Soccer Stadium. 
That'd be the first football game, American football game held there. So that would be an interesting possibility and certainly one in which we could get more Panthers up to the ball game. Cheese it Bowl, this is just after Christmas, December 27th over in Phoenix at the home of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And yes, the Cherry Bundy, Boca Raton Bowl is also a possibility as well. Seen a couple projections there. Another good opportunity to get a lot of Panther fans to that game. So maybe Boca Raton, maybe Tampa once again, just as we had two years ago in a bowl game we were feeling really good about. It was tough when our quarterback hurt himself on the very first drive, but that was a game we were feeling really confident. So maybe we stay in the state of Florida. It will not be the Bahamas once again. Charlotte just accepting a bowl invite for that. So uh, good luck getting your passports and getting ready for the logistics of that trip to our friends up in North Carolina. Uh, but it will not be in the Bahamas this year. So maybe Phoenix, maybe Dallas. So for the Armed Forces Bowl, Boca Raton, Gasparilla. But we're just going to keep refreshing uh, the bowl projections this week and stay tuned to FIU Football on Twitter as well. So that's kind of a recap of where FIU Football stands at this juncture in time, coming off of one of the biggest wins in program history, very admirable performance. Look, when Marshall scores first since 2013, they're 33-1. They got a field goal there. You thought, well, this might just continue the streak, FIU. Had a great opportunity to win in a place that has the fourth highest winning percentage in college football. Tough to go up to West Virginia and get a win. Nearly did just that. All right, Jeremy Ballard and company, they're off to a good start this season. They took down New Hampshire. A very dramatic game. Took a free throw with one second left from Antonio Day to pick up the win after trailing by eight points with under five minutes remaining. Let's take a look at that ball game. FIU defeating New Hampshire to improve to four and three. I started out by saying really proud of my team. That was a hard fought game. Um, we knew, we know coming in, UNH, very well coached, um, very gritty, very skilled, and uh, we knew it was going to be a dog fight, and, and it was. And, um, you know, we, we feel confident getting in dog fights because we feel like we have a lot of dogs, and that showed up there. And it was not pretty, um, and we've had some games where things have been pretty for us on the offensive end, and we've made some shots, and today wasn't one of those games, so we had to find other ways to win. And it was really good to see kind of some old school FIU. We got in the press. Uh, we made it really hard for these guys to inbound the ball, really hard for them to get the ball um, past half court. We turned them over 20 times. We had 12 steals. And, um, you know, th that piece was really spearheaded by number five over here, Antonio Day, um, who we're uh, really proud of. He showed a lot of leadership out there. And um, he, he bounced back from a tough shooting half in the, in the first half to really make a lot of strong defensive plays and then make the biggest three-pointer of the game. During the timeout, our coach had told us to um, run a specific play and like the play had kind of broken up, so I had to just just uh, go off my instinct and just make a winning play and luckily it went in my favor. I just knew we needed a big play and I knew DA went out, so somebody was gonna have to do it. I didn't, it wasn't, didn't specifically have to be me, the ball just came, came to my hands. So I did what I've been practicing to do, shot the ball and win it. We're really excited about this game. I mean, uh, Florida Gulf Coast, like you said, they, it's you know they hadn't been Division One that long, but the time that they've been Division One, they've had a ton of success and um, have really represented the state well. So anytime we get to play a you know kind of inter interstate game, um, you know we relish in that opportunity. So um, we're, we're really excited about what I hear is going to be a really good crowd showing up. So I want to thank everyone in advance who's going to show up, and we're going to do everything in our power to be prepared to put on a great show and, and, and play with FIU passion. Well, we all love basketball, and uh, we should all love cookies. That's the perfect combination for this Wednesday, December 4th. It's National Cookie Day, and we're giving you some Wednesday night treats. All FIU students receive free crack cookies. If you've never had crack cookies, they're incredible. Uh, that's what I was told. I've actually never had crack cookies myself, so uh, maybe you can slip me a cookie yourself if you're an FIU student. I'll be at the broadcast table. National Cookie Day, December 4th, 7 p.m. Got a big game against FGCU, an in-state rival who's certainly had plenty of success themselves. I uh, remember their Dunk City run in 2013. We've taken them down in the last two matchups, including an Estero last year, so looking to continue that win streak against FGCU and looking to have some delicious crack cookies on Wednesday as well. Hey, a reminder, tomorrow is Giving Tuesday, December 3rd. FIU will participate. Panther families, alumni, and friends can donate to the Panther Scholarship Fund to help offset the high cost of swimming. You can find a link to donate at FIUsports.com. All right, so here's our upcoming slate. Again, Wednesday, 
Hoops Ocean Bank Convocation Center against FGCU. You expecting a big crowd for that, for the opponent, for the Cookies to support our FIU Hoops team that's looking for win number five and play Mississippi State, North Carolina State. Really tough on the road, two single-digit games. Keep an eye out on social media as well. The rumors will be flying around for where our bowl game will be. Hopefully we'll know or have some idea before next Sunday when everything is officially announced. But just stay tuned online, social media, at FIU Football, at FIU Athletics, and we'll see if we just head up 95 to see uh, the Boca Raton Bowl or if we're heading all the way over to Phoenix uh, for the Cheez-It Bowl. Who knows? We'll see. We'll definitely know within a week. Appreciate you joining us on Panther Talk Live all season long. Hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving holiday, maybe enjoying some seconds. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Panther Talk Live here at the Graham Center. I'm A.J. Ricketts. Have a great week.